Welcome to the first day of the rest of your lives. My name is Andy Zaremba, and as usual, behind the helm today is uh, my brother Mike. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Pleasure to be here. Looking forward to this episode for sure. This will be a fun one. For, we got a little local celebrity in the house, and we'll get into that in just a few minutes, so hang tight. But um, as usual, we are recording out of 70 West Godover Street here in uh, Float House out of Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And if you have no idea what floating is, go check out uh, floathouse.ca or you can go to YouTube and check out the video, What is Floating? And that video is like a seven minute synopsis that tells you everything that uh, floating is and all the benefits you receive from it. And uh, it's something that I haven't done because I've been really busy lately, but I feel it accumulating in my body. Like, I feel yeah. like I need that, that, that just decompression in silence. And if I've been away for like a week or two and then I come back, um, the first float back can be a little bit jagged. Like I'm a mm. little bit, my mind's really busy. It takes a while for me to relax into it. But once I relax into it, I feel like I just completely defrag my system and I just relax and I just, I feel much more clear and ready to go. Yeah. I find I, I'm way more headier, uh, if I haven't floated for a while mm -hmm. and it, it'll take the majority of that first float back to kind of clear the slate, defrag the hard drive, if you will. And like get back into my body, back into my heart, and, and just let that, uh, yeah, get that resurfacing and re reconnecting with that element of me, you know? Um, yeah. So if you want to try floating, you can use the promo code Vancouver Real and save 20% on a single float. Come and check it out or check it out again because actually uh, it takes a few shots to really kind of get the, the hang of this thing. So if you haven't floated for a while, come back and give it a shot for 20% 20, 20 off. Awesome. And I'm also going to talk about uh, my new website, andysaremba.com. Very easy. If you can find it on, if, if you're following me on Instagram or uh, if you just Google Andy's Remba, you'll, you'll find it. And um, the reason I created it is I wanted to have a hub for all of our different entities that we've created. And I had uh, a guest post me the other day, like, you know, wh what's, the, what's the link between all the things you're doing, between Float House, between Vancouver Real, Mindful Mass, you. now Man Talks. <laughs> you're the link. And I'm like, I'm the link. So <laughs> I'm like, now I have this central hub. And it's kind of cool. It's like an e-business card in a sense, where it's like if somebody wants right. to know who you are, be like, go to my website and connect through whatever you want to connect with, right? So it's like a way of distributing people without having to really think about it. Just go to the website and click on, oh, I want to be a guest on Vancouver Real. Well, we can go right through the application form and fill out the application and maybe join us on the podcast or uh, look up with, hook up with the Man Talks Mastermind mm -hmm. or even book a float through there. Yeah. So. It's a hub for everything, so you can check that out. Nice. It's um, very cool, actually. And um, what else can we talk about? We can talk about the Vancouver Real Community. We have a uh, we have a course, an online course being launched in the fall, and it's going to be called Life in Motion. It's going to have three components. It's going to have movement, meditation, and nutrition, and it's going to be all online video <clears throat> or in-person co in coaching if you want to upgrade as well. Um, and uh, you can look for that coming in the fall. Sweet. It, you can connect to uh, Vancouver Real, um, the community page, and we'll be launching all that through there. And lastly, Mindful Mass, mm -hmm. or maybe not lastly, but we have the Mindful Mass meditation event coming up. That'll be on June 21st. It's going to be at City Hall uh, in conjunction with International Yoga Day. So we're going to do a yoga class and some sort of meditation afterwards with some sort of surprise from our friends over at Lululemon. Nice. And lastly... Lastly, again, we're going to storm City Hall, grab Mayor mm -hmm. Gregor Robinson and sit him down. Is he still there? I, I, think I think so. I don't, I don't I think thought he was, I mayor. thought he was retiring. No, Maybe. you don't know? I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, whoever's <laughs> running the show, we're going to go over and take over and start meditating. We'll and... calmly storm City Hall <laughs> after a meditation. Uh, like, let's just chill out, City Hall. <laughs> yeah. You know? I it's, think they're pretty chill. For they City are, Hall. Yeah, yeah they don't, they're, they're not really super fast yeah. movers over there. But also, um, we have Man Talks coming up, and we have our first Man Talks event scheduled for June 11th. It's going nice. to be with Carlos de Leon. It's all going to be about exploring the masculine shadow. Um, the event will be launched probably next week, so by the time you get this, you can link up on the um, mantalks.com, and the event will be there or on the Man Talks community page. And as it well. might be worth noting, too, that you know men and women both have masculinity elements in them, so... You know, if you are a female yeah, out totally, there and totally, you want totally. to explore this, you totally can't well, do it for you as well. Women are, are totally welcome for the event. And the funny thing is the Antagony uh, crew, which is Carlos de Leon's uh, center, center, whatever you want to call that, yeah. uh, it's very female-focused. 
and apparently a lot of their women are very excited to come out to the Man Talks event cool. to potentially meet some you know high caliber men. So, Amazing. Yeah, so it's going to be a good networking so event, and we're going to have happen. dive into uh, how to become better men. So that'll be on June 11th. But anyways, Wrap dispense it up. with yeah. the intro, and uh, I'm stoked to introduce our guest today, Cam McDougal. Welcome to Vancouver Real. Thanks, guys. Stoked to be here. And, you know, we, we had an introduction a couple months ago. Well, back in November, maybe. Yeah, I think it was. It's back in November, you messaged me and you wanted to connect. And I'm yeah. like, who is this Cam McDougall character? <laughs> <laughs> and I was on my way to Peru on a, another epic adventure, as we mentioned beforehand. Yeah. So we kind of slipped through the cracks or whatever. And I and then, you know, every couple of weeks I'd see a video on Instagram or on Facebook <laughs> pop up. And this dude was super energetic and he'd be like full of positive energy and like getting out there and having fun. And uh, I'm like, oh yeah, Cam, let's get him on the podcast. <laughs> and here you are. Here I am. Awesome, man. So, I don't, you know, I had a hard time deciding where to start today, but let's just start with whatever you want to start with. And, you know, who is Cam McDougall? That's a great question. <laughs> Still, I'm spending a long time trying to figure that out myself. Um, thanks for the intro, guys. Welcome. And, uh, yeah, really, really stoked to be here. I've been listening to your guys' podcast for a while, and it's epic what you guys have done. Thank so, you. Appreciate so super that. stoked. Um, who is Cam McDougall? Uh, born and raised Vancouver boy, which is Fair. not very common <laughs> anymore, yeah. right? Totally. I yeah. keep yeah. finding that out. People are like, wow, you're actually born here? It's kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so born and raised Vancouver boy, you know, lived, uh, lived here my whole life in between Van and Whistler. Spent a lot of time kind of adventuring, doing my thing when I was younger. Um, had a bit of a wild mm -hmm. ride as a, as a teen. Um, was kind of always finding issues in school, hanging with the wrong peeps. And uh, really kind of set off on a trajectory originally of, um, you know, a lot of misguided energy. I had a lot of it, as you've, you've picked up on the videos. Totally. But when you put that into a video, it's, it's amazing. But when you put that into something not so positive, it ends up being mm. pretty gnarly in the end. So I spent a lot of my youth kind of in trouble and doing all that kind of stuff. And um, the reason I brought that up originally was because kind of where I am now is a big reflection of that. And originally when I was going through all that stuff, I ended up dropping out of school, going to juvenile attention, that whole kind of craziness. And eventually I found passion and I found cooking. Mm. And what this taught me was that when you are passionate about something and when you find something that truly triggers you in a positive way, you can do anything that you want mm. and you can do anything. It, it just totally opens up the 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 whole kind of playing field and you have boundless energy too when you, totally. when you find your passion you can just keep going you're like a pit bull on a pork chop right <laughs> yeah, you're just exactly. like go 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 right yeah. and and so i found cooking and and what this did for me is this this kind of opened me up to what i was actually capable of mm -hmm. in life Very and cool. i was still young i was a sous chef at like 20 years old so running a kitchen and around the fire and the yelling and the chaos. And I was kind of like, oh my God, I love this. This is so fun. Where were you? Right, uh, for the Mark James group. So I was at Taylor's Crossing in North Van. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. And then I was at the Brew Pub in Whistler and Yale Town. So I was kind of moving around and nice. worked at a couple of the restaurants. But that's kind of where I found my groove in life, you might say. And I kind of found like, okay, I like things that are a little crazy. <laughs> From there, I ended up going, going back to high school, finished my high school as kind of a 20, 21 year old. I uh, ended up then realizing, okay, I want to open a restaurant. I went to business school at BCIT, kind of got my diploma in entrepreneurship, did my bachelor of business administration, kind of fell in love with business. Mm -hmm. um, over the next couple of years, I worked in the finance world, understanding that, understanding that I did not like a desk job and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff and, and just spent a lot of time finding myself in the business world. The funny thing about that is it brought me kind of back to where I was originally. Um, as a teen. And the reason was I started making a lot of money really quick, forgetting what my priorities were, getting blinded by chasing, you know, the dollars instead of my heart and uh, kind of found myself back in a very similar situation. And in the end, I decided it was entrepreneurship. And I found my passion again, like I did in business in entrepreneurship. And that brings us to now where I'm currently in the process of selling my first business, um, you know, rolling out my new coaching business. And you have a website too, right? I do. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, cammcdougal.com. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. So rolling out that new business and, and just taking what I've learned 
over the years of my life and now implementing them into you know other people and teaching them about my fitness journey and teaching them about the perspective i gained you know when i was younger and and just really kind of helping them find that passion that i ended up finding cooking in everyday life which has been it's been unbelievable it's been unbelievable what would you say are your kind of like foundational stones that you know for your coaching career that you're getting into now and just for yourself in general like what are your what's your foundation for you like what are the things that you just like i have to do these to keep me performing well um you know relating well and just you know being a, the best version of myself and serving as best i can what are your what are your pillar stones yeah beautiful beautiful question i love that uh my first one's connection right so I want to be connected to my food. I want to be connected to my community. I want to be connected to the people around me. I want to be connected to the environment, right? Nature. I'm, I'm a big climber. I'm a big proponent of, of that lifestyle. And so connection is number one. The second one is excitement. I got to be excited. I got to be having fun. If I'm not having fun, I'm not doing something right from business, work, all that kind of stuff. Whatever I'm doing, it's got to light me up. Right. And if it doesn't light me up, then it's not working. Yeah. Right. And so, it, you know, that that's a huge one for me. And then the third pillar that I am, you know, extremely, extremely adamant about is transformation. Hmm. You know, life is like that. It's like that that empty bar on a website that you just want to fill up with a donation or whatever. Right. It's that it's that track bar that just keeps letting you know, OK, you're doing better. You're doing better. You're working towards something. You're getting there. You're getting there. So my personal transformation, as well as using kind of my energy and what I've built to transform others is, right. is kind of the, the third pillar that I cool. really, really, really put a lot of weight on for sure. Yeah, I like that, that transformation piece for yeah. sure because uh, that's such a huge um, thing in life that I think some people miss yeah. because it's like we get caught up in our normal routines into our jobs, into our lives. We get stuck paying, you know, paying down our mortgages and maybe having a family, having kids, and all of a sudden we're in that life. And it's really hard to get out of it, but we have to, over time, we have to like burn off the dead wood from time yeah. to time or else we're going to just spontaneously combust in a huge flame, totally. right? You have to like continually transform yourself. Yeah. What are some of the tools that you've used over you know, the course of your life really to, yeah. to help you with that? That's a great question as well. Um, and I would say that the, <clears throat> first, that the first thing that comes to mind and probably the most important thing is to always stay curious. I've got a, I've got a saying mm -hmm. that that's basically like you only get old when you stop being curious, you know? And, uh, for me, it's, it's just fostering curiosity in everything I do. You know, it's like, it's like, how do I start to climb? How do I become the fittest person I can? How do I learn about nutrition? What do I do about the gut biome? How do you know? Like it just, it's endless. It's how do I do pottery for crying out loud? Right. It really doesn't matter, but fostering that endless curiosity, because what that's going to do that's going to then stimulate a desire to learn. And when you're learning, you're transforming, mm. right? On the flip side, the most, I think what complements that well is like developing a mentality of being a student mm. and really dissolving your ego. Because the moment you look to people that are doing things, you know, I don't really like saying better, but differently than you are, you start to open yourself up to learn from them. You start to kind of gain some insight and, and what that does is it opens you up to becoming, you know, a wealth of knowledge and discovering things that you might not have otherwise discovered with an ego bias. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. absolutely. Yeah. For sure, man. Um, I think, uh, you know, one, one problem with a lot of people is that they find like people, people know business. You can figure out how to run a business. Like the nuts and bolts of it is actually fairly easy, but I find that the people, the stumbling block people, people come across is just getting a good idea, right? Mm. And that's where the curiosity piece really comes totally. into play. Uh, one piece of advice I give to people is to listen to as many different resources as you, as you can. Like exactly. podcasts are an amazing place for it. Like with, uh, with Rogan, for example, we started listening to Rogan back in 2010. And like he's turned us on to so many things, including podcasting. And the interesting thing is he started talking from things like podcasts too. You get things that are a little more um, uh, on, the, on an uptrend. They're not quite hitting the mainstream yet. Totally. Mm, so yeah. it's like you can actually catch something before it becomes a mainstream Definitely. thing. So it's like a good source of inspiration. Same exact thing that we did at the Float House. Yeah. It was like we caught on the floating ahead of the curve, and and uh, and that led us to be like the you know the market leaders in Vancouver, which helped us open up and have a great start, totally. right? So I think looking for constant sources of inspiration is, is huge. 
Oh yeah, it's 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 everything. It's yeah. everything. Did you guys did you guys hear from Rogan about floating and then decide to start this? Did that? Yeah, well, pretty cool. much. Like we heard yeah. about it before, but like he rekindled the spark. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's awesome. Yeah, he was yeah. the first person that introduced me to it. Cool. Um, and and uh, I was just like, I gotta go try this thing because I was yeah, yeah. into yoga and meditation yeah. and things like that, and definitely into it. And it was super intriguing to me, you know, and like I was one of those ones who, when I heard about the environment and especially hearing him talk about it, I was like, it was very intoxicating. I, I had to go try this thing. Not everyone's like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but well, everyone is to a degree and it's like their openness to that element of themselves. Mm-hmm. Right. But anyway, so yeah, we went and tried it out and then bought our own tank simply based because we wanted to float more. Uh, we just like after he floated twice, I floated once, and we were like, let's get a tank, mm-hmm. and we put it up in my condo and started hosting people <laughs> yes, under the amazing. table in my yeah. condo. But it is like it, that actually is one of the a good tool for uh, fostering creativity, totally. Because you know? again, getting quiet, right? It's like you know we taken you taking all these inputs, mm-hmm. and um, I think you have to sort of triangulate different ideas. So you get all these interesting ideas, and when you get really still and really quiet, like, you know, through meditation or going yeah. for, for a walk or something like that in the forest, like all of a sudden you start connecting dots and potentially coming up with totally. new ideas. Right. And you know, I'm sure you've had a very creative process in your life because you also had another business. Um, what was the name of it again? It was the Barons of beef, the Barons of beef. Yes. Right. And I'm sure like, how did that come about? Cause you were in the finance game for yeah. a while and you were floating at that time. I know yeah. just to say, cause like <laughs> it helped you get through the stress totally. or something like that. Totally. But then you transitioned into Barons of beef. I so did. how did that come around? So I was, like you said, working in the finance world and we were, my, my buddy that I went to business school with was also at the same finance company. Um, and uh, he approached me at one point and he was like, hey dude, you should probably try this paleo diet. Hmm. At that point I was like, what year was this? This would have been, oh, what, 2013, 2014. Okay. Yeah. Paleo is like, Take, kind of taken off back then. Yeah, that's when it was like, you know, Rob Wolf was hitting the scene like really oh, hard right. and, and things were kind of like, it was still a little like avant-garde, right? Like people yeah. people kind of like, were kind of like, what, you're what? like a caveman, really? you know? So, yeah. so it was like, yeah, 2012, 2013, he was like, he was like, yeah, man, he's like, you gotta check this out. And so like I was eating tubs of ice cream doing the dirty bulk and, and weightlifting at that point. And, and it was- <laughs> it dirty was, bulk. <laughs> you got some good terms. <laughs> I like that. I'll keep them coming. I'll try and keep them coming. I'm, I might be running out, but we'll see. Um, but he basically approached me and he was like, try this paleo thing. And so I did. And with paleo, obviously comes CrossFit. You just can't, you can't do one without the other. Right? It's right. like, like the moment you go cross, CrossFit, you go paleo. Or the moment you go paleo, you go CrossFit. And then right? you're drinking coffee with then, butter in it. Oh yeah, exactly. Well, that was, that wasn't out yet. Yeah. Well, I don't think that it was. was. No, it was, it was there. It was, it was there. there. Super early. You days, had to be so. like real early adopter. Yeah. 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 So he approached me about that and um, we were like, okay, a big part of this is eating a lot of meat. And so we were going to the grocery store and we were like, we were buying tons of meat and we were just like asking like, is this grass fed? What's this? Where's this from? What farm? And you know, you get the, the guy looking at you like the deer in the headlights, like, so like it comes from the truck. It's from the back of a truck. We <laughs> yeah. cut a package open and rewrap it and there it is. And it's kind of like, oh, okay, something's wrong here. Um, and so we were like, all right, we got to figure this out. So we met a butcher, amazing human being. This guy was like, we met him. He had this like ponytail. He had like one massive arm and one smaller arm. And we're like, what's going on? He's, it turns out he's a professional arm wrestler. And the guy was like, <laughs> die. This, this he guy just was trained like, his own. He just trained one arm actually, all the time. Though, but you, you want it to take all the, the, the nutrients, right? So you mm. eat and they actually train that one arm. Wow. It's wow. crazy. Like you'll see guys with massive arms and then this like, I don't know if it's you guys like seen super scary power movie. Arm. They got that strong hand, right? Yeah. It's like, what, <laughs> I don't even know. It's crazy. <laughs> crazy. Um, but we met him and he was speaking our language. Mm. And so he taught us what kind of meat we wanted to eat. Mm. And so we were like, all right, dude, if we, if we get enough people, will you deliver to our gym? It started really taking off, right? Eventually he said, you know what? Set up an order form. You guys will, you know, maybe be able to pay for your own meat every week and this, that, and the other thing. So we're like, cool. And so we set up an order form online, built a little basic website, and we started delivering meat to our gym in my parents' West Valley van at our finance lunch break in our suits. It was pretty funny. Awesome. Pretty funny. Um, and it took off. Hmm. One gym heard about it, next gym heard about it, next gym heard about it, and it just kind of spiraled through. And people were like, oh my God, like, we got to get this. And so it, over five years, evolved into a subscription business that Interesting. was- 
basically full, just about fully automated and it, it became a really cool experience. Very cool. Um, but that's how, that's kind of how it came to fruition. That's I really, totally organic. It's a great story. And I really like how, um, you leverage something that was like happening, like the CrossFit community, mm -hmm. and totally. it went viral through there, yeah. and that's what really launched it. And exactly. you know, I can relate to that story because we we kind of did a similar thing with Float House with yeah. the yoga community because yoga mm -hmm. is a natural extension to uh, meditation mindfulness, right? Yeah. So it's like we really leveraged sort of the yoga community in order to get this idea out there because we figured these type of those type of people would be more open to a meditative experience. Yeah. Um, and from there is sort of like a power base went when it went outward outwardly mm -hmm. from there. Right. So it's similar to that, I think. Totally. Exactly. Yeah. It's all about that trend, right? You, yeah. you get that wave. It's like surfing. You hit that wave. Yeah. Picks you up. You're like, Oh my God, people are into this. What's going to happen? You know? Yeah. And then, you and that's a huge part back. of it too. Right. Totally. Is like hitting the wave at the right time. It's everything. So you can have a great product, but oh, if you don't yeah. hit it right, it's like, it, it's going to go underneath you and you're going to miss it completely. Totally. Totally. Yeah. It's all, a lot of people like they don't understand that when they're starting a business. Right. Yes. It's like, you know, they, they look now, they're like, I want to start an energy drink company. And it's like, dude, <laughs> you know, like yeah. that's, that's like a long ways away, right? Yeah. Like, Shout out meta energy drink. Yeah. <laughs> a guy in my Mantox mastermind just launched an energy drink. Hey, and you know, and if Actually, you guys I just had one today, it was very good. From where, from <laughs> okay, where there Where'd we you go. get it? Meta, you gave me a couple, remember? Yeah. 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 Anyway, it's like, it's like, well, sorry, you, you guys natural are obviously really, stuff. really good at it and, and, and yeah. you can definitely, you can definitely still make it happen. But the point, the point that I was trying to get at is just that there's, there's a lot of people in the entrepreneurial yeah. world that get stuck on an idea and they get, they get, they hit a point and they're like, why isn't this taking off? And yeah. it's like, either it already happened or it, people aren't there yet. That's right? the thing. And if the people aren't there yet, it's tricky yeah. because you know, it's going to happen and like, it's just a matter of time. But the thing is then, you know, you can, do you want to be that one that has to pave the way and like grind That's a hard it out? road. It's yeah. a hard road. Really or is. do you get everything ready and then let someone else kind of pave and then just when you see it really get into that Trending. place where you need to launch, you yeah, launch, totally. you know? Yeah, that's uh, our approach. Yeah, we had exactly. that one a friend of yours. I'm not going to say his name, but um, he came in and he had that idea for a product. So basically he creates products and he has them like ready to go. And then when, it, when the trend hits, he just launches Boom. it. And yeah. then he does that over and over and over different things. Because he doesn't want really. to do the, the hard grinding stuff, which yeah. is, which I get it, man. It's exhausting. And expensive, right? Yeah, very yeah. expensive. Very and expensive. higher risk. Yeah. A lot higher risk totally. for sure. And it's like you, you create something and then that big foot from the sky comes in and it's like, wow, that was a really good idea. <laughs> See <laughs> like, you later, right? right. You know, exactly. like an Amazon starts selling it and you're just like. Done. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that was great. Exactly. Right, next idea. So the meat. So, so what's the name of the company again? Sorry. The Barons of Beef. The Barons yeah. of Beef. Yeah. Um, so you go around to CrossFit gyms, drop off all this, all this, uh, really good meat. Yeah. And then where did it go from there? It just, it grew into a subscription business. So we saw butcher box in the States that was just mm -hmm. totally rocking it out, doing amazing things. Heard about them through podcasts, all yeah. that kind of stuff. And, uh, they had set up an awesome subscription service and we were like people ordering meat ad hoc wasn't working because you buy a whole animal and people all want bacon. You only get 20 pounds of bacon per animal and, mm. and you know, so it just wasn't working, right? When you sold out of the product people wanted, they would leave. So mm. we pivoted and uh, we decided, okay, we gotta control this whole process and let's, let's do a subscription service. Um, and basically did the subscription service for the last couple of years, which was awesome. And uh, as we kind of came to the, the end of, of, of kind of our saga and that business, our competitor was really interested in, in setting up a subscription service that we had spent the last couple of years developing. So it was an easy handoff to them to be like, awesome. all right, here you guys wow. go. Continue the legacy. Crazy. That's like yeah. the fairy tale entrepreneurial story. Right totally. There. <laughs> People ask me that. They're like, they're like, dude, they're like so many businesses fail. I'm like, I got, I had to learn how to start a business, run a business, sell a business. You right. know, I'm the first one. And, yeah. and that to me is, you know, I'm very grateful for that. And I think that's one of the best ways to learn. It's just like the school of hard knocks yeah. in a sense, totally. not necessarily the easiest way to learn. Like you can pick up a mentor, yeah. right? And they can yeah. definitely walk you through some of those things. Or you, and you can piece it together for yeah. sure. But yeah. I mean, that's the thing. If you can get an experienced mentor, you can really accelerate oh, the whole yeah. process, right? It's a working MBA, right? Yeah, for totally. sure. Yeah. And that's kind of like your your new venture right now. So you're, yeah. work, you're transitioning out of, uh, out of the meat business yeah. to do coaching and mentoring yeah. and that sort of yeah. thing. So how's that going for you so far? It's going really well. Um, and I think it's really important to kind of like bring up a quick point on that and that like, I was, I was so grateful for the business opportunity that we did, but ultimately I ended up realizing that what I was trying to channel into this world was going through 
a medium that wasn't allowing for me to, to totally be myself and explain right. really what I wanted to do to this world. Like yeah. the reason we didn't start a meat company because we wanted to sell meat. We wanted to, we started a meat company because a, we saw a need, but B, we wanted to make people healthier. We wanted to basically give people an option so that they didn't have to go buy that stuff at the grocery store. Um, and that is where my true passion is. Like I want to empower people to be the fittest, strongest, most amazing version of themselves. And I was trying to do that through a meat company. And to me, that wasn't really the answer. So right. um, I ended up pivoting, whoops, I ended up pivoting to starting a coaching business and yep. building more of a community around doing big things or even bigger causes. Right. And so I, I realized that like, I was really good at getting things done. Right. Like I was just like, well, you have I, the energy, you have that really good energy. Yeah. Well, for, thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. But it's, it's, it's true. And, and I realized that it was like, okay, I want to be, you know, I, I want to make it to regionals and CrossFit. I make it to regionals and CrossFit. I want to start a business and make it a success. I do that. Right. And so it, it got to a point where it was like, how do I, foster this energy in other people and how do I build them to a point where they realize that this walking pound of flesh is actually their vehicle mm. to bring amazing things to this world. Yeah. Well, right? oh man, like, it's amazing how many people miss that, you know, like totally. how critical is it to take care of the walking pound, you know, meat suit, whatever you want to call yeah. it. Right. It's like, man, that's like, you cannot function properly in the world unless you take care of it. Totally. Well, and we focus on, buying a new pair of shoes or a new car or a new bag and complain about the cost of groceries. And you're kind of yeah. like, but you can't have that bag or new shoes if this thing falls apart. Totally. Right? Yeah. And I wonder like, what do you think it is, man? Cause like, um, we had Steve Maxwell on the podcast a while ago. He's like a, he was on Rogan a bunch of times. Yeah, he's yeah. like a fitness nutrition yeah. like guru. He's a strength coach. Strength coach. Kind of he, well guy. Really, but he's all about longevity. Yeah, he's yeah, really yeah. good. Really solid advice. Um, but he said that only 14% of the, North American population actually exercises. Wow. Only 14%, right? And of wow. course, being in our world, uh, like, you know, in gyms or whatever yeah, you're yeah. doing, like, you're going to see, you're going to see more fit people. So you think, start thinking the whole world's like that. And I think yeah. Vancouver is a bit of a microcosm. I think there's more fit people in Vancouver than most places. Probably. But, um, Probably. but what do you think it is? Like, people know it's good for them. You know, they know it's good for them, but there's something holding them back from doing it. I'm so happy you asked that question. <laughs> so happy you asked that question. Yeah. Um, is purpose, man. It's, it's understanding like, and as a trainer, I saw this all the time. So even coming from the people that were in gyms, there were so many people, you know, and Mike, I'm sure you saw this as well is that so many people come in and they don't change, right? They come to the gym and, and there's, there's like this, this quick change of like a reduction in inflammation because they lose their water weight. Cause they're starting to kind of, you know, purge their system a bit, but then that's it. Right. And it's, it's because what they do outside of the gym is changing is, is kind of mitigating what they're doing inside the gym. And I found that it was purpose. It was, they didn't really have that. Why it was like, you know, was one person's like, yeah, I want to do laundry on my abs. The next person's like, yeah, I want to be able to bounce a dime off my glutes, you know, whatever that <laughs> ends up being right. But it's empty, yeah. right? It's yeah. empty. So understanding that purpose and understanding that why behind your training and tying something that you have an emotional attachment to, to that training is everything. Mm -hmm. And I think even, especially people that aren't in the gym, they just have no idea why they want to go to it. Yeah. So they default to, you know, what's what? accessible entertainment, whatever is available. Totally. So exactly. Pick your distraction, right? Exactly. Right. We live in a world of, you know, weapons of mass distraction. Right. And it's, yeah. it's just like, I like that. One. You can't, yeah. WMDs. Right. Yeah. I, heard, I think I heard that on Sean Stevenson's model health show. We're picking that one up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Right. yeah. yeah. Well, I can't take credit. I, Sean Stevenson <laughs> rocked it, but I'm stealing it too. So awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's kind of where, you know, like the ride that I'm doing comes in and that's where it's showing people that, the only way you can push through or find passion in fitness and treating that, you know, walking pound of flesh beautifully is understanding how it's going to contribute to something that's bigger than yourself. Totally. Totally. Right? So um, when people are looking for that, because I yeah. feel like that's a very common in, in this day and age, especially with like the younger, the millennial generation, we'll just say that mm -hmm. people really struggle with meaning and purpose and they, yeah. they become very almost nihilistic in yeah. a sense where they just, well, nothing really matters. And so who cares? Let's just drink and do drugs or whatever. Right. Totally. I'm not saying that you shouldn't, there's not room for fun in your life. I'm definitely yeah, not yeah. saying that, but what I am saying is like, there are a lot of them that feel kind of lost. So when you, when you're working with somebody, you come across somebody, you're coaching someone who doesn't really have that motivation. Mm -hmm. How do you start 
you know, probing into them to help them find that? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. And, and so when I, when I was going through my, my kind of world, you know, I kind of had two big revamps in my life. I might say I stuck to this thing I call the fulfillment matrix and the fulfillment matrix is basically a, a bunch of, I, I took them from a bunch of different books and I brought it together and it's, it's a grid that I make that basically looks at each avenue that you truly care about in your life. And you basically make all your decisions based on cause and effect on that grid. So what I do is I, I basically sit them down and, and, or I, you know, in my program, they read through it and they, they start to brainstorm on what they like doing. Right. So we start to get the creative juices flowing on like, you know, whether it's, you like to sing, you like to paint, you like to hike, you like to climb, you like to do all these things. You just brainstorm, like, you know, just, just total. What lights you up? Yeah. What lights you up? And it doesn't matter. Don't hold back. Just let it all out. And then from there, I start to categorize them for them. So a lot of times, you know, if you like to work out, you like to climb, you like to do this, you can look at, okay, that that's fitness is really important to you. And then you look at, you know, maybe like, you know, a relationship, your boyfriend, your family, this, then relationships are really important to you. And so we start to look at what these categories can be. And then we basically map it out for them. And I have them define what each of those categories looks like and where they're showing up in their life in that category right now and what it looks like in a perfect world. Okay. So you find out where they're at and yep. where they are. Yeah. When you say where they're showing up, do you mean like, do you give them a sort of a percentage? Like, okay, you're at like 50% of your physical ability. I say one, I say between one and 10, tell one me where you're at on this scale, you know, like showing up for your family. How do you feel you're showing up for your family? If they, if they you know, a lot of times they'll be like, man, I love my family. I want to have such a good connection with my family, but I haven't called my mom in you know, two months, you know, then they're kind of like, okay, maybe I'm at a two or a three here. Like I got to up my game. Right. Yeah. And so we can start to see it. And the moment they start seeing that scale and they ask those questions to themselves, they start to go, Oh man, you know, like what, what am I doing with my time? Where mm -hmm. am I putting it? Yeah. You know? And then they start to go, man, I'm working too much. Or am I doing what I want to do? Because I can't do any of the stuff that I really care about. Right. And, and let's say career is one of those one of those quadrants on the matrix sure and it's taking all your time and everything else is getting left in the dust totally you got nine items on that matrix you know you're sacrificing eight for one especially if you don't even like your job totally right yeah. totally yeah. exactly well that's such a that's one of the biggest challenges right there right mm -hmm. it's because like keep like keeping everything dialed in and put like Pulling it all back, like you know, mm -hmm. you can be, some people can get really obsessed with fitness and ignore their career. Totally. People can like be obsessed with career and ignore their family, yeah, or whatever, right? And it just works like that. So, and if you do really, you need to have that balance in order to be sustainable. Yeah, like you can redline it in your career for a while, totally. but that's not going to last. Like something will break down. You yeah, know? either a relationship's going to break down, your health is going to break down. Totally. So it's like you have to. And you have to have the career. There's no doubt. You have to make money somehow, yeah. right? So it's like, well, how do we dial that all in? Right? Yeah. So you, that's sort of your way of like, I guess, rating where they're at and then and then saying, okay, well, here's your deficiencies. Let's work on those. Exactly. Exactly. And, and the funniest thing <clears throat> is, is that most of the time I find that it, it, it's, well, it starts with us and it starts with them and it starts with generally their vitality because <clears throat> when they start to feel shitty, then they get less motivated yeah. and they take the bus more instead of walk and they start eating bad food instead of cook. And so there's a spiral down that happens through their lives in it. And it basically goes all the way across their career, their relationships, their family, their you know, adventure, their this, their yeah. that. Like if you're feeling like shit, how can you do anything? Totally. Right. Yeah. And, and that's, that's what I realized is that like, and that's why I say like, start with this because the moment you start to look at your body, like I wake up every morning I feel like a million bucks, right? And what am I going to do? I'm going to wake up and be like, damn, I feel good. Let's go do something awesome today, right? Yeah. And, and to foster that, though, you got to feel good. If you yeah. wake up, and, and don't get me wrong, it's not every day, right? You, you kind of can have your days where you, you might not feel as good. You might be sick. You might be under the weather, whatever. And, and th those days generally aren't nearly as good, right? And so... Yeah. Yeah. So they're going to be less often having, and usually less potent too. Exactly. Right? Having that solid foundation and, and physicality totally. is great. And that's one thing I've always grounded myself in. It's like, oh, yeah. no matter what's going in, going on, like I'm 
like I'm always working out. Yeah. I'm always going to the gym. I'm always mm. going to get my exercise in. That's one like non-negotiable. Yeah. And one of the biggest ones for me lately, uh, I'd say for the past year and a bit, I've really focused on is getting proper and regular sleep. Yes. Like that one. Definitely. Is so it's, I, it's almost more important than the physical for me at this totally. point because if I feel like crap, I'm not going to work out if I'm too tired, right? Oh, yeah. So most I mean definitely. getting and like the keys for that one, I think, is just like going to bed at a regular time and waking up at a regular time. Yeah. Like being on that schedule. And when right. you can really regulate your sleep cycles, it's amazing how much better oh, you feel. Oh, totally. Your hormones, every, like your your recovery, like your brain fog, all that stuff. Just yeah. get, it gets, yeah, it gets fully tuned in. So. so really like that working out portion kind of starts the night before to yeah. get a good night's sleep. Yeah, right? well, and that's, the, you know, when I, when I ran that event the other day, and it was about how to succeed in any fitness program. Um, you know, the, the, the first two kind of steps to that, you know, the second step is, is basically, you know, to fine tune the machine and, and fine tuning <laughs> the machine, it's, it's sleep and nutrition and sleep before nutrition, because even mm. if you're eating well and you're not sleeping well, it's not, it, it, it's not going to help out, right? Yeah. Your, your body's not working in the right way. So sleep is like number one Huge. on that scale Huge. because yeah, you need the IGF, you need, you need the melatonin, you need all that kind of stuff to mm -hmm. be firing right. Otherwise, you know, the, the, the rest of the endocrine system suffers and so does your energy. How do you feel about eating breakfast? Important or not important? Mm, great question. If I'm on ketosis and doing intermittent fasting, not important. Um, if I'm training and burning lots of glucose, eating lots of sugar, um, then I find it can, it can hinder me if I don't have some, some breakfast in the morning, yeah, whether right. that's just a smoothie or whatever. Um, but to be honest, like slow carb keto with an intermittent fast, you wake up and don't need it and you feel fantastic. Yeah. Cause you're just burning your body fat at that point. Totally. And, and, and yeah, so you, we basically, we go into ketosis. I think every, every night we go to sleep, you go in, you dip into a bit of ketosis, right? And so you really start to burn that fat right through the morning and then by lunchtime you're like yeah i could eat right yeah. but whereas when you're sugar burning you go into that again and you have this massive blood sugar crash when you're sleeping and then you wake up and you're like oh my god it's totally I need to eat some sugar yeah, regulating that glucose is so important it's and it's like um right now i'm actually i haven't eaten since last night i was like ah, you know i'm gonna just do a little fast i'm not gonna work out today so i'm just gonna fast up until Beautiful. dinner i'm gonna eat yeah. tonight and that's it epic i uh, put something really good in me i don't yeah. know some fish or something yeah. and some Amazing. vegetables and stuff but um like I played around with ketosis quite a bit yeah. as well, and uh, the results you get are amazing. I yeah. love the energy you have, it's the, unbelievable. The, your cognition. Um, you know, the one thing I would say is if, you're, if you if you feel really hungry though, um, you it can lead to anxiety in, mm -hmm. in the morning. Totally. And one of the things that helps with that is having like a high fat, high protein meal in exactly. the morning. Yeah. If you can do that, I find that if you're having trouble with anxiety, like yeah. that really brings it down. Totally. But, um, but all amazing tools to play with, right? Yeah. It's like, and it is that, that glucose going up and down that really throws you off. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, it really does. Mm -hmm. It really does. So, you know, so we, you know, it's easy to work. Well, not necessarily easy, but it's easier to work with somebody who is motivated and wants to make change in their life. Yeah. Now, what if the person doesn't want to make change and they have blind spots and they're going on a bad course and, and you know you got to help this person somehow, but they're just not interested? Yeah. That's, that's a great question as well. Um, I was uh, approached the other day by a teacher and the ride that we're doing right now is in support of at-risk youth. And the teacher came up to me and she asked, she knows my past, she says, Cam, how do I use what you know to relate to the kids? And I told her, I said, what, anything you say, anything I say, is going to plant a seed, but it's not going to register. The immediate gratification is not going to be there. You know, you're going to sit there, you're going to say something, they're going to act like it went right over their head. You're going to plant a little seed in their subconscious and you're going to hope that enough seeds get planted and enough water is shed on them to grow. Um, I learned that at a really young age because people were like, don't keep doing this. You're going to die. Why are you doing this? Why, you know, you got to get off drugs. You got to stop drinking. You got to stop fighting. You got to stop this. And at the time, I was just like, you don't know me, you know? And so I find that when there's, when there's so much ego or there's so many kind of like different variables that are holding people back, all you can do is live by example. Mm. And there's really no way that you can, you can ever force their hand. 
So my, my younger brother, lovely guy to death. He's amazing. He's a baseball player in, in uh, Iowa right now. He's 20 years old. And he's been, it's been amazing growing up with him and watching him grow because he'll kind of like shun a lot of stuff that, he, that I try and tell him. And once I start doing it, then he starts going like, oh, okay. Like, like meditation and floating, for instance. Mm -hmm. I remember when I started doing that, he was like, man, you're weird, dude. Like, <laughs> you know, what do you, he, he, I remember he walked in on me meditating one morning and, and he's like, I'm just sitting there probably doing some weird chant. Got some, got some sage going, got some beads, yeah. got some beads mm -hmm. going. And he's just, yeah. he's like, okay, Cam's, Cam's lost it. Right. <laughs> and so, so I start floating and he's like, man, he's like, you go sit in a tank for 90 minutes. Like, how do you do that? couple years later he's like so what about that meditation mm -hmm. what about that floating can I go with you next time it takes time yeah right and so I find that with people that are in that situation I just do me and I, I go every time I see them they're like how you doing living the dream how you doing fantastic yeah how you doing oh my god I'm so excited for today and then they eventually they start to go how the hell is this guy so fired up all the time right. and never like, yeah, you know, things are okay. Yeah. And then they start to go, there's something here. And I see it a lot with, my, with a lot of my friends that are in the business world. They start to go like, oh my God, Cam, what are you doing? You're out like, you know, riding floaties in the snow on a Wednesday. <laughs> you should be working, dude. Like, like get your priorities straight. And then I start to like, get fitter and I start to get happier and I start to travel more and abundance starts coming in in all these other ways. And they start going, what's going on? Is there something else to this? Mm. Like, tell me, tell me more about what you're doing. And so, you know, I guess that was a really long winded answer to your question, but in the end it's, it's living by example and being myself and being authentic in it and hoping that those seeds start growing. Let me ask you about just your, um, you're, yeah, like it seems like you have this ability to be very energetic, very enthusiastic, positive. Um, now, you did comment that, you know, it ebbs and flows yeah, for yeah. sure. Shit happens and just, you know, life is life. But like, is that something that you feel that you've always been naturally like in you? Or you did say you had a challenging youth. Like what tr what shifted in you and what and what did you do? Did you do some sort of practice or some mm -hmm. landmark course or something that like kind of shifted your perspective? Like what was that that kind of has shifted you to be like, I'm trying to look at the, you know, the cup half full versus half empty totally. sort of thing. I got goosebumps when you asked that. Cause I just like, I love, I love, I love talking about this, this part of my life. Um, when I was in the finance world. So like I said, I had energy all the time. I, I was always good at anything I tried to do. Right. And it was just cause I worked hard. I wasn't, I wasn't naturally brilliant. I wasn't, you know, naturally athletic, but I put my heart and soul into everything I did. And when I was in finance, I hit a serious rock bottom, like a serious rock bottom. Like I cried on the couch for like six months. Like I was drinking too much. I was partying way too much. The extracurriculars were flowing like crazy and I was just not happy. And so I just like, I hit this savage rut. And in that rut, I read, the Power of Now by Eckhart mm, Tolle. Nice, man. And it was crazy because a friend gave it to me after BCIT. And he was like, I think this is going to come in handy. And one day when I was having some crazy moment, I was like going through some boxes. And I was like, oh, my God, like I'm losing it. And that book <laughs> in a, in a friggin' Ziploc bag was sitting at the bottom of an old moving box that I hadn't touched in years. I got goosebumps now. Right? Yeah. And I, and I grabbed it and I sat down and I read that thing in like three days. Nice. Yeah. And it just, boom, all It's changed. so funny, man. That book has done that for so many people. Yeah. It's crazy. It's wild. It's, it's wild. I remember the first time I read that book was um, 2005. Yeah. It was in Thailand. And you had given it to me. Yeah. And right. I was read like, it in 2005. <laughs> yeah. In, uh, and you're like, take this book India. and read it. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I'll read this book. I'm reading it. I'm, I'm like lying in this hammock on this little... This little hut in Koh Phi like covered in flea bites, just like yeah. getting eaten alive. <laughs> I moved to another bungalow after that. But I'm reading this book, and it was just like, it's like a whole new way of seeing the world opened up to me. Yeah. Totally. So crazy. It's like, it's something about the way he writes, and that book in particular. Yeah. Like, yeah. New Earth definitely uh, took it to another level, but yes. that one was more impactful for oh, me. Oh, man. 
One hundred percent. Yeah. And it it was a paradigm shift. Like I don't like to use that term very often because it's like pretty serious, but it actually was. Like yeah. it went from like seeing the world one way to just like pivot. Yeah. And I was like, holy shit. Oh my god. Right. Mm-hmm. And 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 I just like so I I found that I quit drinking. I started really focusing more on my fitness. My work started getting better. I had to basically pay bartenders to feed me soda water when I was out with clients, but all these things started changing. And uh, what came of that was priming. And so I always had this energy, but I found that a lot of times, like some weeks I'd just be like, you know, like, help me. I'm so tired. And other weeks I'm like, Ooh, let's do this. Like let's take it down. Right. And and what I was realizing is I was just like, I was just shooting in the dark. Right. I was just like, I had no conduit for it. And it was like one moment I was just like amazing. And the next I was, I was kind of like down and I was like, shit, man, am I bipolar? Like what's going on here? You know? And, and I was kind of like, you know, and I I honestly considered that for a while and I was worried about that. And, And what I did do was I started looking at, priming and I started learning more about priming and well, what is priming for people who don't know? Yeah. So priming is, is basically creating a beautiful state for yourself every single morning that you wake uh, up. Okay. And there is, there is, is that a Tony Robbins thing. It is a Tony Robbins thing. Yeah. Um, and it's it, like, and, and I, I know a lot of guys in the personal development world, just, it's like, it's the rule number one, right? Rule number one. And, and basically what it came down to is waking up, finding stillness, finding silence, allowing for all my thoughts to kind of clear through meditation. Um, and then it would be, you know, at that, when I started, it was listening to Arnold kind of, uh, motivational, motivational talk talk about fitness. And I would do my push ups, I would do my sit ups. I would start to do my affirmations. I, you know, I'd be like, you're amazing. You're fun. You're exciting. You're energetic. And Mm. I started being like, oh my God. And then, you know, at the end of that, I would journal, I would write down what was, what was kind of fantastic about my day, my gratitudes, this, that, and the other thing. And then I would go and I would fill myself with my greens plus my apple cider vinegar, my, you know, my shake. And I would just start to really boost my vitality. And it was this, it was like, I could cultivate that energy every day. Mm, Cool. And Very now, cool. now I do that and, and it's, it's become, it's, it's changed a lot over the years, but every single morning I wake up and it's a non-negotiable because you don't know what's going to happen. Right. And, and one thing that I've found is that the moment you have control, you feel way more energetic, right? The moment you lose track of your schedule and someone's like, come over here, let's do this. Let's do that. You lose traction, yeah. right? You start to lose traction and that takes your energy constantly rebounding. And priming sets that control for me. Yeah. Priming is like, I got this day. I'm going to own this day and I'm going to bring it. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's been just paramount. And the cool thing about that too, is you're really training that pathway in your brain and eventually it becomes like your, your automatic and that goes, exactly becomes like subconscious nature. And you wake up again, Pavlovian in a sense, you wake up and you're like, you're going up instead of going down from the, from the jump. Right. Totally. In terms of mood. It's your Uh, coffee. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, For sure. I know for me, it's like, um, I have a six month old and so, you know, my, my morning routine has been literally turned upside <laughs> down. Imagine, my morning dude. routine unexpectedly started at 4.45 AM <laughs> this morning. Um, and so it's like, I need to, this, this having you talk like this, like, how can I prime myself? Like, yeah, I'm not gonna be able to prime myself the same way I did before. It's just not going to mm-hmm. happen. So what, what prime can I do though? You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It's like, yeah, well, what, what prime can I do? And maybe it, maybe it is just like a few minutes of just like mental stuff in the shower, even like yeah. whatever. Right. And then plus my nutrition or whatever, but like, yeah, yeah just get on something again. Cause like, yeah, it, like it's, you have a kid and it completely transforms your whole orientation on life. Again, it's yeah. paradigm shifting. Totally. And so you got to reconfigure and rebalance. But like, so I'm just hearing you talking like, yeah, I sh- I need to figure out Routines. my new prime, yeah. my new prime. Totally. You know, that that, that works with my life yeah. now though. Too. Yeah, totally. Cold shocking. Oh but yeah. I would say oh, yeah. like, if there's one thing you can do to change your state True. at 4:45 in the morning or whatever, cold shower, blast yourself with cold water. Yeah. Like if I'm if I got something going on, I'm stressed, I'm anxious or whatever, and I go and just like blast myself, it's like it's like, oh, yeah, I'm back. Right. Well, you know what the funny thing yeah. is, it snaps you back into the present moment it's crazy. too, right? Um, I want to backtrack just a little bit yeah. about uh, power of now because there's some people, and again, I'm not. This isn't a judgment; it's just an observation that when you you tell them about that idea. You give them the book and it just does not land. Mm-hmm. It's just like they're just not there. Do you think it's a matter of like 
that idea that you have to live by example again for them to be turned on to that idea? Or, or what's the reason that so many people, not so many, because a lot of people do get that the being you know, present, living in the now, that sort of thing. Um, but I find some people just like, oh, it was just too simple. Like, it's too obvious. I need more. You know, what, what's your answer to something like that? I think that at that point, they're still too in their head because, you know, no matter what, if I read Buddhist scripture, if I read Tony Robbins, if I read Eckhart Tolle, if I read Marianne Williamson, you know, no matter what avenue it's coming from, I can take something from it. Mm. Right. No matter what book I read, even if the whole book really wasn't that great, there's still one tidbit of information that I take from it. So what I would say to them is I would, I would, I would hope I would be like, you know what, Let, let's read it again and just, and open up to it and just, just find that one nugget in there. That's going to, that's going to, you know, light you up that you, that you might be able to take away and, and add that to your arsenal. Right. Right. And, and, and just kind of approach it in that sense. And I think this is a good uh, topic to broach. I think a lot of our listeners will be already on that train mm -hmm. anyways, yeah. but it's like, well, there's probably people in their lives that are not on that train. Totally. So it's like, how, how can you start helping people around you? Cause it's like, you know, you become the average of, of your five closest friends, right? Totally. So it's like, how do you start living an example to transform around you, which helps bolster you up as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I really liked how you use presence going into the exercise of priming mm -hmm. because it's like, yes, you can be very present, live in the present moment. And that's hundred percent true. But also the gift of being human is being able to set up our future for a more positive outcome yes. for ourselves, right? So it's like, how do we plan to make sure that, you know, not only will we be good today, we'll be good in a week, we'll be good in a, a year, we'll be good 10 years from now. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you want to be present, but you also, it's striking that fine balance between, I think, being present and also um not foregoing the mind and its ability to be used as a tool to plan. You know, I think that's where some mm -hmm. people fall into a trap where they're yeah. like, okay, cool. I can just live in the present moment all the time. Totally. And it's like, yes, but you have to, you have to live. You got to earn money. You got to, totally. you got to take care of your house. You got to take care of your body. Like there's a lot of things you got to do, right? Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. I, I vibe with that a lot. And it's, I think spirituality gets a bad rap in that sense because like I've ran into people that are like, you know, oh, you got a mala on and you're doing this and you're doing that. And they're like, you just pretend that everything's Gucci, you know? Mm. And you're like, no, that, that's not the case, right? It's like, I accept the negative as much as I accept the positive because it's all a part of the process, right? And, and I think it's really important to just like, to highlight that, you know, it, you go through your ups, you go through your downs and it's just, it's, it's so important to see spirituality and to see mindfulness as, a way to ground yourself and center yourself and to actually use your mind as a tool and not be governed by it. And not be just you know? run by it completely e exactly. unconsciously, right? Exactly, right? And I find that that world too opens up, you know, you're going into presence, meditation, you're going into altered states of consciousness essentially, yeah. and it leads to peak experiences. Yeah. And peak experiences come through many different ways. It could be from jumping off a mountain or rock climbing or whatever yeah. the things that you do, yeah. exercising, it can come through meditation can come through plant medicines, all these different avenues mm -hmm. it can come through. But they say that people who have more peak experiences generally tend to be more successful in life. So it's like the people who are like in Silicon Valley, that's the one thing that they'll do when they, the, the last CEO they hired, I believe they took him to Burning Man mm -hmm. and they're like, all right, let's see, this is your interview. Yeah, yeah, can you yeah. go to Burning Man for Amazing. a week? And then they hired him and he's now like CEO of Google. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like having those peak experiences and the more of them you have, the more likely you're going to be successful. It's like there's a correlation totally. between the two. It's that curiosity and that challenge, right? It's, yeah. You know, you, you got you to gotta be able to, to get weird every once in a while to kind yeah. of push that boundary to realize, like, you know, where you want to go. Like, if, if, if you follow, it's like you were saying at the beginning, right? It's like, you know, graduate, get a good job, get married, have kids, hip replacement, die. You know, it's <laughs> like, it's like, who wrote that book? Yeah. You know, like I don't, I would never read the same book over and over again. Right. So how do we start to dabble in things like Burning Man and things like, you know, reading the power of now and all these things that might challenge my consciousness and might yeah. challenge my state. Right? Well, part of it, I think comes down to someone's level of openness. Yeah, totally. Like in the big five personality traits, it's yeah. like how open are, is the individual? I think that is a mm -hmm. great gateway into these type of things. Mm -hmm. And there are, there are ways you, be, you can become more open in your personality for sure. Like, yeah. um, I think when they did the, uh, the reference to psilocybin, 
when people from one psilocybin experience and again not advocating drug use to fix problems mm -hmm. but when they when they did this with psilocybin they noticed a whole standard deviation change in trait openness mm -hmm. just from one dose and it would make them a much more open person and, yeah. and if you're really open that means you're really exploratory yeah, more creative yeah, yeah. you're all these other really good qualities which are useful for you know getting out of ruts and totally. trying to make your way through life and maybe starting a business or yeah. whatever it happens to be right yeah yeah, yeah. most definitely yeah so awesome man um i want to ask what, about the uh so this this um the bike ride you're yeah. doing can you tell us a bit more about that totally totally so that's kind of like my big project right now and um so my buddy who i had been helping with nutrition and fitness for for about a year approached me uh, you know, probably six, seven months ago. And he said, he was like, you know, like I keep ebbing flowing with my fitness and this and that. And the other thing, like, I want to do something, I want to set something ahead of myself so that I can keep myself accountable. And I was like, okay, well, like, tell me what you really love to do. And, and he was like, I loved a mountain bike, right? He was like, I really, really loved a mountain bike and I haven't been doing it. And so he was like, all right, there's this, there's this trail from Banff to the American border and I want to ride it. And I was like, cool, what trail? And he was like, he was like the great divide. And I was like, I'm like, that sounds long, but that doesn't sound great. Like what, what's the, what's, tell me about the great divide. Like, why is it called the great divide? And he was like, oh, it spans from Banff to Mexico. Wow. And, uh, cool. I was like, well, shit, dude, we're doing the whole thing. And he was like, no, you know, like he, he runs a, a company, uh, a digital production company. And he's like, dude, you know, this could take 60 days. Right. So. We decided we were just, uh, he came around and he was like, you know what, man, like if I can do this, you know, this is going to be the most amazing thing I've ever done in my life. Right. right. Leading up to this time. Um, and, uh, we just decided at that point in time to, to rock it out. We had no, I didn't even own a mountain bike at the time. Right. I was just like, I haven't really been a big mountain biker. I was like, you know what? I'm going to throw it out there because that's what I do in life and, and see how the cards fall. And so he was like, all right, let's do it. And, um, we started talking, we started gaining momentum. We linked up with the take a hike foundation, which is a foundation that helps at risk youth get off the streets. And I was like, or not, not just off the streets, but out of their, 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 you know, their, their tough their life situations. Yeah. Out of yeah. their, out of their tough environment. It's a great way to put it. And I was like, no way I can, I can do this and raise money for kids that were like me and hopefully empower them to get into nature earlier than I did after making a lot of mistakes I did. I was like, awesome. That's great. And so we started gaining momentum there and, and then we reached out to Mac and we we're like, Hey guys, we're doing this ride. You know, like, what do you, what do you think? You know? And, and they were like, yeah, you know, we'll pay for all your gear and give you new bikes. And we're kind of like, what? Okay. Okay. Wow. Like hmm. amazing. So they came in with a massive sponsorship for all of our gear. You know, the guy without a mountain bike suddenly had a mountain bike. Awesome. And uh, we reached out to GoPro and we were like, hey, guys, we're doing this ride. What's, what do you guys think? And they're like, yeah, here's a bunch of gear. Film it. Document it. So GoPro sponsored us. And then Body Energy sponsored us. And RYU sponsored us. And, and so then the accountability really became real. And we were like, like oh, man. Now we got to do it. You know, now it's really <laughs> happening. So Jeff calls me one day and he's like, he's like yeah, because we were planning on 45 to 60 days. And he was like, this is how, he, how much he's transformed in the last little bit. He calls me. He's like, man, I'm... I'm thinking it's not hardcore enough. You know, and he's like, <laughs> I'm thinking it's not enough. He's like, let's make a goal of doing it in 30 days. And, uh, it's 4,350 kilometers and 54,000 meters of elevation. Wow. Spanning. Yeah. Banff, uh, down in back into BC really quick. Um, into Montana. Then from Montana, we dip uh, into Idaho really quick, and then Wyoming, Colorado, New Mexico, all the way to Mex to the Mexican border. Wow. And um, it's a, it's going to be a journey. But when he when he jumped up with that, I was like, all right, let's do it. That's that's the case. So now we uh, have committed to riding, you know, 155k a day for 30 days. Wow. Um, on our mountain bikes through the Rocky Mountains, cross continental divide, and our goal is to raise a hundred thousand dollars to put 10 kids through the program. So it's 10 grand a year for each kid. Um, yeah, we're just, uh, that's kind of what it's all come down to. And it's, we've called it shorten the divide. So we're riding the great divide. We're trying to shorten the divide between what people think is possible and what they can and cannot do in life. And, um, we're using it as a pillar to talk about, 
the power your body has and the power that body has to impact the world around you. Amazing. Right. So yeah. when does this start? Sorry. So right now, tentatively, we, we're supposed to leave right. August 6th. Okay. But we're thinking that because we're going to we're going to attempt to do it in 30, um, we're going to get into the desert too close to summer. And that's really hot. Yeah. So <laughs> we're, we're kind of like, that's the one part of this ride where I'm like, people are like, you worried about the bears and cougars and wolves. I'm like, I'm like, no, nah, I'm a P and W boy. Like I've been in the mountains forever. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about like running out of water in New Mexico yeah. in the desert and being like, okay, this is real now. Right. <laughs> yeah, so, right. um, I'd take a bear over that any day. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> like, and so, Crazy. um, we're, we're thinking about pushing it back to like an August 16th. Right. leave date so that we're in the desert kind of middle of September where it drastically takes a dip. Right. How can sure. people uh, follow along and watch this journey yeah. unfold? So we've got a website uh, www.shortenthedivide.com We've got our Instagram which is Shorten the Divide. Uh, we're also, uh, yeah, website Instagram is usually the best way to check Perfect. us out on awesome. that for sure. Right. Yeah. How cool. long does it take to uh, ride uh, 150 kilometers in a day. How many hours of riding is that? We're, it, it'll depend on the elevation and, and, and descent, but we're, we're, sh we're thinking around eight to 10 long days. Yeah. And are you, are you camping? Are you going to stay at places along the way? What, what's the Yeah. Other? So you can't, we'll probably, we won't be in the deep wilderness for more than four to five days at a time. The way, the way the, the route kind of works is you go up into the mountains, you ride some ridges, you ride through some logging roads, and then you dip out in a town and you can, hopefully get a, a, a bed to sleep in every once in a while. Um, but we'll mostly be uh, kind of bivying and, and, and so you'll restock at these restock towns. in these towns. Wow. Yeah. How do you get water when you're like four or five yeah. days in? So we've got life straws, we've got all that kind of stuff. So that's a big one, right? Drinking Is, down the streams. Yeah. Drinking down streams, right? <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. That's, so, that's your, man, you're really, it's a cool adventure. For yeah. Sure. How, totally. how old are you, by the way? I'm 31. 31. 32, okay. 32 actually. It was just my birthday in April. Oh, I right. forgot Happy that. Happy birthday, man. <laughs> are you Taurus? I am a Taurus. So am I. There we so go. Three Taurians no. at the table. <laughs> you know what? I can room. almost always tell. It's so yeah. funny, man. Tauruses are so similar in nature. We are. We so are. similar. 100%. It's weird, right? You, you think astro astrology is what it is, right? Yeah. But it's just like, fuck, man, Taurus. You know, Jan Kasparik. I'm like, God, you know? Right. Yeah, he's a Taurus, eh? Yep. And you just something that... We're awesome. We're totally. Yeah. We, well, and we make we make great friends. Not great lovers, but great friends. <laughs> 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 well, we're stubborn as fuck. We are, right? Yeah. We are. My 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 girlfriend's big into uh, big into astrology, so she's okay. always she's always being like, "Stop being such a Taurus." Yeah, stop being like, "I am a Taurus. How can I not be a Taurus?" Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah totally. Totally. Um, awesome, man. Well, uh, how are we doing there, Mike? We just crossed an hour and two. Wonderful. Well, that's that's a pretty good place to wrap up, man. Yeah. Totally. Anything else you want to get out there today? Not really. Just um, stoked to be here. Stoked to chat with you guys yeah. and, and rap like this. It's um, been too long. Yeah. I mean, like we should have made it happen sooner, but it's one of those things. But uh, I'm glad we could finally connect. And Definitely. I, I love to maybe do a joint venture between two or little totally. or, or little entities in, yeah. in the summer potentially. And we'll announce that when that's more official. Yeah, yeah, that'd but, be amazing. Um, it's great to connect, man. Most definitely, guys. Um, you know, if you need any, any recommendations or anyone that has any recommendations uh, to come on the podcast, right? We're gonna have a link on on VancouverReal.tv. You can fill an application, and it, it'll be sent to us automatically. And then we can, you know, see if you want to come on. So if you're interested in coming on the podcast, go to VancouverReal.tv or AndyZermba.com because I have the link scheduled there as well. Um, if you want to be a guest, or if you know anybody you can recommend, that'd be awesome too. So amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Cool. So cammcdougal.com. Yeah, Cam McDougal on Instagram. Um, and those are those are the two pla best places to get me. Amazing, Beautiful. man. Yeah. Well, thanks for sitting down. You have a lot to share, and I love your energy, and I think a lot of people can definitely learn from you. So thanks, guys. Thanks love for your coming energy on, as well. man. It's easy to, right. easy to channel it when everyone's rocking the same kind, right? Cool. Very cool. I love it. Good luck with your journey, too. Thank you. Thank All you. All right. Well, so I think that pretty much wraps it up for today. Yes. Yeah. Um, so if you want to float, floathouse.ca, bigofreel.tv, mindfulmass.org, Mantalks.com, andysremba.com. Until next time, to whatever is, to whatever is. Whatever is.